Hey there, Russ here. Welcome back to the shop. And we are going to talk about the uh, the HBS, the home backup system that I have completed and it works. I've run a few tests, including running it for full 24 hours, furnace and all, and it had no problem at all, didn't use a whole lot of battery. So I'm optimistic this thing will actually work if the power goes out. I live here in Wisconsin, uh, southern Wisconsin, and in the U.S., and so it's a rural town, and we do lose power here at this location every now and then, unfortunately. And so it's not predominant, it's not predictable, and even the duration that it's off is unpredictable, usually less than 24 hours most of the time. So I think I have enough battery backup system here to keep me supported when the power's off, especially if I'm thrifty with the power that I'm using and go into a uh, uh, mode where I turn most things off that I would normally leave on uh, and I would make sure that I'm running a minimum. So, but I, I think it's gonna work out. Plus I have a generator. That's usually how I have been getting power to the house when it goes out. But now I will use the generator and plug it into this unit to recharge my batteries while it's still in use powering the house so that that would make it perpetual. I don't have to turn it off at night like I do the generator. And I don't need to run the generator probably for two or four hours just to keep it charged back up to go another 24 hours. So uh, basically it can be theoretically perpetual, hopefully most of the time, I won't even have to fire up the generator. Anyway, that's the theory. So this thing is just backfeeding the house uh, through the two outlets that I did on the wall. One male and one female, L1430. Uh, um, and it's the same one that you would plug your generator into when if you put one of these on your house to plug a generator in. Um, I'm not going to get technical about it. I'm just showing you how I got it all set up. And so now everything is fully functional. And I have this unit that is here in the in the shop. And it will reside in here at least for now. I may move this thing to the house. I may actually take it off. I've got it on a cart now. And I may take it off the cart and mount it on the wall. Who knows? But at least it's functional. So when the power goes out, I should be able to get by. Uh, so let me show you what I've got and explain to you how much power it is and all that sort of thing so that then you can uh, understand what it is that I have done to help supply my power when the power goes out. So anyway, this is the unit here. It's on a four-wheel cart, 13-inch pneumatic t uh, tires, and this is the steering mechanism, the front of the cart. And so it's just like a little wagon. And I took and I, I laid a piece of plywood on it. Uh, and I put my batteries, which is most of the weight. I, I kept it to the back of the cart, but inside of the wheels as much as I could. So that the weight is kind of distributed throughout the cart. But it doesn't put all the weight up to the front wheels. That makes it so that it's easier to turn this. And this thing actually rolls real well. And it turns. I can, I've can. i learned to control it. And it'll move around in a pretty tight area. But it is a 2 by 4 footprint. So it's going to be bulky wherever you have it. Um, let's go over the unit what exactly it is. And then I'll tell you about some of the things about how it works and that sort of thing. It's This is a six, uh, EG4 6,000 um, kilowatt. Uh, output all in one. Uh, it has the capability of plugging it into a wall and using this to charge the batteries back up or you can use it to when the power goes off have it switch over all sorts of different things but it's a, a classic all-in-one and this is a 6000 watt version low frequency inverter so um, that is the basis of what I have and then I have three uh, server rack batteries, 100 amp hour ones, and between the three of them I got like 15.3 kilowatt hours of storage power. So, and that should be enough to get me through one 24 hour period on the house. So, 
Anyway, so if I take, and if you think about the whole thing as a whole, the way to hook it up was really very simple, and it really took a minimum of, of knowledge to be able to do it. You have a positive and negative cable, and that comes off my battery bank. These are all hooked up in parallel. I have the negative hooked up to this battery, and the positive is hooked up to the opposite corner battery up there. So that the, the flow through the battery should be pretty equalized at all times. Um, now, I did face these going up to make sure I have access to this. But I think that I'm going to turn these to the front and on the side so that I can put a plate over here. Because then it will just be the metal top of the battery case. And then I can use that area to put some of the other add-ons that I think that I'm going to want to do to this sooner or later. But right now, it, it is functional. And from this point forward, as I do changes, I'm going to try to make sure that it's always ready to go so that it, who knows when the power will go off. It, and one thing, last thing I want is for the power to go off when this thing is down again, me working on it. So anyway, I make changes to this as I go along. But this is the basic unit. So I just made the two connections here going to the battery. I did put... A Victron smart shunt on it right here and this uh, that's the 500 uh, amp hour one or amp and I did that so that I can see the status of the battery and the load that I'm putting on uh, the battery system so I know where I'm at at all times this system on this one works okay for that sort of thing but it doesn't really do as good a job as informationally as I could be able to get from that so I decided it was worth the extra money to go ahead and buy that. Uh, so, but those are the main components that I have. I bought a 25-foot generator cable, the L14-30, and I cut it in half. So that each of these two leads here are both 12, 12 feet long. And that's how I hooked this up. This one is hooked up to the input. And the female one is hooked up to the output. So if I want to draw power from the batteries and supply power, then I would plug this into the house, flip the appropriate breakers so that everything is can backfeed, and then I will take and uh, use this to back backfeed either my garage or the house and the garage from here. So this, it'll be real easy to set up. Power goes out. I go to the main breaker box, turn off the main, flip things, uh, switches. Uh, excuse me. Then I just, all I have to do is come out here, plug this into the outlet over there, t flip the breaker, turn it on, and I'm up and running. So it takes less than two minutes to give me power. Um, I also have an alarm that I'm putting on the main box so that when I turn that breaker off, I don't know when the power is going to come back on. So they do make an alarm that you can put on it so that when the power comes on, even though the breaker is off and you don't know that it's on, that alarm will tell you that power has, has been restored. So that way I can then go back, turn this thing off, flip the breaker off, unplug it, Go in the house, flip the main on, and I'm back up and running on the house again. And it should be a pretty easy transition back and forth. And the only time I would need the generator, because I went with 15 kilowatt hours, I'm hopefully, once a day is all I'll have to do to run the generator if this turns out to be a multiple day uh, event. If it turns out to be less than 24 hours, when the power comes on, I would just take this one, Unplug the power from here, make sure everything's off, plug this in, and then let it charge up so that while the power is on. So this will keep it maintained. The power is at a, uh, powered up all the time. I may plug this in and run just my garage separated from the house with the breaker and then run this to put it through some exercises for some more testing. But basically, the whole unit works, and I made three major connections. This one this one and this one. I did hook up the plugins that go from the battery to here to get this to communicate with the batteries. Um, even though I'm not using this to monitor things, I know that what it does 
basis on what the battery, what it reads from the batteries at times. So I decided to go ahead and hook the can up to it. I think it's called the can connections. <clears throat> Easy to do, follow instructions, but I did hook that up. But I do depend on this, for the smart shunt, for information. But that's the basic thing in a nutshell. If you want to see me plug it in, I can plug it in. Well, in fact, let's do this. Let me pull this cord off. Right here. There we go. And let's plug it in. This is just for charging. Since we have power, we can use this to charge it up. And it's probably right at 100%. But we'll go over here. And we take this and plug it into the appropriate box. The hard part's lining things up. And this is for power out, so the power is going to the unit. When we turn that on. And you can see this thing came alive. It's counting down. No voltage going out, but I've got 120 volts coming in, and now it's charging. So. I see my voltage there. Can't remember all the cycles. I thought somewhere. There it is, amps. So now I can see how many amps I'm pushing back into the batteries. Because they're almost 100% charged. So now we can just let that run. And as you can see, I very easily plugged it in and, and now I'm charging it up. If I plug that into the generator instead of the wall, it would do the same thing. It would just charge it up for me. So that's how I will get power back into the batteries. So, let's see, it's, I've got it set to 30 amps, so that's what it's putting in now. It's 30 amps are now coming in and going to the batteries and fully charging them. They've already been fully charged. So, if I was going to use this to power up, I would just plug the other cord instead, flip that breaker on instead, making sure that all the other breakers are set accordingly, and then it would backfeed into the house just that easily awesome. So anyway, that's how it kind of works. We'll just let that run. Let it charge up the rest of the way. So that's the whole thing in a nutshell. I, I will tell you that it is a little bulky. It's nice I can move it around since I don't know what I'm going to do with it. But I can even roll this up a ramp and bring it into the house if I wanted to. Um, and So wherever it ends up being, then I may take it off the cart at that point. But I also could do this in the two-wheel cart version. But you can't use any of those dollies that are out there. You'd probably have to build your own dolly. But I think that it would be easy because you're pulling around about 450 pounds. And even though this cart will hold up to 1,200, I've got 400, a little over 400 pounds on it. It still rolls very easily. So this works pretty well for if you want to keep it somewhat mobile, the cart. But basically, you got the batteries, you got the all-in-one inverter, a little bit of wiring, and you'd have a setup. Um, and nothing flat so at least it works I'm very happy with it um, if you have any questions about it or technical uh, things of how to set things up there's a lot of good information out there but if you have a particular question I will answer your question if I can but it, it is something that you could do yourself but I would make sure that you got to be pretty good with understanding the wiring or at least have a good friend that does to help you do the wiring part uh, but if you can overcome that, that, and you have the knowledge somewhere to do it, they're real easy to make, and you really could make one in just a day, in less than a day, as Will Prowess says, because he did his. So let's talk about why I did this. <clears throat> I could have gone out and bought a couple of Bluettis and a couple of extra batteries and done the same thing. It wouldn't have had quite the 
watt hour uh, the kilowatt hours of uh, storage but it would still get me by to do it that way and then you don't have to do all the stuff that I did here and yeah you could do that but first off you'll find is you to get up to the amount of comparable to this in both storage and output you probably would spend in excess of twelve thousand dollars and that's in almost any of the ones that are out there the other drawback to those, in my opinion, is you can't control how fast you want to charge things up and that sort of thing. Or how fast you want to drain the batteries. Or if you want to upgrade something, it's impossible with those. I can do all of those things with this since I made it. And the big difference is the reason, the, the main reason why I did, did it this way. I have spent right at $5,600 to put this thing together complete and all and all my cost the blue eddy would be in excess of probably twelve thousand dollars to get close to what this thing is so yeah you can make it a little more streamlined but i could actually make this more streamlined too if i really wanted to and build this into a small three uh, uh excuse me a two-wheel dolly type setup without any problem but again there is that work involved uh, but the money was the big savings and I can expand this without any problems so I'm happy with it I'm gonna you be using it and hopefully this is all I'll ever need I may add solar to it sooner or later but I don't know uh, my main thing is is I wanted to be able to have power when the power goes out while it's out and hopefully within 24 hours it'll be back on and it'll just be two minutes effort to turn my power source on and turn the other one on going back and forth will only take a couple of minutes each way so I, I think I've simplified how to do it hooking it up is pretty simple you just plug it in turn the breaker on and you're off and running so if you have any questions about any of this let me know I will try to answer them I want to thank you for coming by um, if you learned something here you like this video hit that like button most importantly though please Oh, before I go, there is one more quick thing. And before you go, not after you come back. I also, magnets are your friend on this. I got a little magnet right here that I use so that if I take any of the screws out, it gives me a place to put them and not get lost. So I kind of keep that there. And this is just a little thing. That if I have little parts, I can throw them on there. But more importantly, I, this is the manual. I took and printed it out, put it into a plastic binder, and I put some magnets on it. So now, I usually keep it either on the side of the unit over here or up here. But I, and I also put one here to help hold it open, and now I can use this thing while I'm trying to do whatever I'm doing. It makes it a lot better to have this thing right there close at hand. So... Uh, I wanted to make sure magnets are your friends on this thing like here I want to put a little mini shelf so I was kind of playing with this magnet here to do that but you can magnetize a lot of stuff on here also I have my tablet that I use to talk to the shunt I want to make a little shelf that I can set this up on here and it can reside on here while I'm using it and then I can use this and it's just a little Android tablet, an inexpensive one, that I happen to have. And I also can use my phone instead if I wanted to, but I wanted to mention about that too. I almost forgot. I don't remember if I mentioned it or not, but also I did buy this adapter. And what this adapter is, is it plugs into the output. And then you have four 120 volt plug-ins for extension cords. So you can use this portably, take it out in a remote area and use it as a power source to run just about anything you want. So, but I think that's about it. Uh, I am going to make improvements to it. I've been looking for other ideas. But anyway, um, that's the way it works right now. So, like I said, I appreciate you coming by, but please come back again because I'm nowhere near done. Mm. Thanks, and we'll see you guys again very soon.